up on. So Wisdom Health Services has a YouTube channel. There's quite a bit on there, but we're starting to try to record our presentations. So it can be a reference, I mean, it can be a reference for patients. It could be a reference for you all, um, for your coworkers that are like, man, I would really like to attend that sleep presentation, but I just couldn't get there. Let them know that they absolutely can. And then if they want wellness credit for it, we'll have a short little quiz that they can, I can just make sure they get the key points and they can take that and submit it for that week of wellness credit too. Okay? But we love to see you all in person because that's what our program is all about, that high touch. So um, we're going to talk about sleep today. How did everyone sleep last night? Good. Good? Good. Good. Yeah. So if you didn't sleep very well, hopefully we'll have a few tips that you can take away to make it a little better. So why do we need to sleep, right? Every species on the planet sleeps. We all have that in common. Um, it's very important. Poor sleep. So if we're not sleeping well, we're tired and grouchy. Uh, but we can also, it can also lead to insulin resistance, cardiovascular de disease, depression, uh, mood disorders, poor immune function, which is a big one in today's world, right? We're talking about boosting your immune system and keeping yourself healthy. Frequent infections, so you can get sick a lot. And overall, a lower life expectancy. So you always hear people say, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Those people that only sleep, you know, three or four hours a night. And I always say, well, it's going to be a lot sooner than you think. <laughs> so sleep is how our body repairs itself, right? We go to sleep and our body goes to work, um, repairing a lot of the damage that we've probably inflicted on ourselves a little bit. Um, so sleep, it's a major cornerstone for an energetic, joyful, and healthy life. So sleep is critical. Um, it may very well be the most underappreciated aspect of wellness. So sleep comes first um, in our hierarchy of our wellness needs. 75% um, of people who suffer from depression also have a sleep disorder. So those sleep disorders and depression kind of go hand in hand. Um, who feels wired and tired all the time? So you're tired, so you caffeinate, and then you can't sleep because you're over caffeinated. And so we create this vicious cycle. Um, we think we can regulate ourselves with melatonin to sleep and caffeine to wake. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. Um, who wakes up multiple times in the night? I can just speak up. Um, anybody struggle to fall asleep? Yeah, that's the mind racing a lot of times. Mm -hmm. We'll get into all that. Um, so like I said, hierarchy of wellness, sleep is always on the top. So sleep comes before nutrition, as much as I hate to say it, before exercise, stress management, before everything else. So if you're not getting a good night's sleep, you're not going to make good food choices. You're not going to have the energy to exercise or to exercise well. Um, you cannot handle stress, right? Those little things that come your way that you would just be able to blow off become very big deals or you make them very big deals. Um, I get the question a lot. I don't have any time to exercise except for 4.30 or 5 in the morning. I will tell you every time. Get that 7 to 9 hours. That seems to be the sweet spot for most people. I will be honest with you. I'm 10 hours. I need 10 hours a night. It seems ridiculous. I'm not that much attention. <laughs> but I do. I feel my best when I get that much sleep. I don't always get that much sleep. But I always get 7 to 9. Um, but 10 seems to be the, the sweet spot. And it's different everybody so don't just think oh I've got to get seven you might need nine you might need ten more than ten probably not there might be something else going on but uh, sleep hygiene so I feel like we've all heard these things and we know these things but we don't do these things right we've heard that we need no bright lights three hours before bed so that's kind of honoring those circadian rhythms Sun comes up we're awake Sun goes down we sleep right so creating that environment so kind of dimming the lights in your house so you don't have to have every light on um, after dinner you can kind of turn those lights down even light some candles for dinner um, just signaling to your body hey we're, we're coming down um, no eating late so trying not to eat after dinner so I feel like this is where intermittent fasting has become very very popular right that's the new hot thing to do and really it's the thing that we always should be doing breakfast right break the fast so ideally you are not eating for 12 to 14 hours overnight 
which if you would have dinner at 6 p.m. and then you'd have breakfast at 6 a.m., there's your 12 hour intermittent fast. So somewhere along the line, we started eating really, really late or before bed. And so nine, 10 o'clock, we're eating a bowl of cereal or maybe having popcorn with movies or we're staying up later, we're eating later so we can stay up later. And so that's where we, we kind of get off. I'm not, not a fan of intermittent fasting. I just don't think that it's the miracle everyone thinks that it is. It's just the way our bodies are designed to function. I have the dietitian nodding, so yes. <laughs> um, no exercise three hours before bed. Exercise jazzes you up, right? You don't wanna get yourself jazzed up and then you're going, 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 and then you just lay down, you try to sleep and you can't sleep. Your body has to decompress and come down. So trying not to do that three hours before your bedtime, and it's different for everyone. No alcohol, or at least in moderation. So I do have some folks that love a glass of wine in the evening, one glass of wine for women, two for men, right? That's our, our threshold. Um, and they, they say that it does help them sleep better. I don't know if that's true or not. I do know everyone's different. And if I have a glass of wine, I wake up all night long and I know, I don't know what it is. Is it guilt? I don't know, but <laughs> I do. So knowing what your threshold is and does alcohol affect your sleep. Um, and then dealing with those mental and emotional stressors. So sometimes we have worries or we have ideas, right? I feel like I have ideas and my best ideas come to me right as my head hits the pillow and then my brain starts firing off. Oh, you could do this, you could do that. So I keep a notepad beside my bed and why a notepad and not just the phone? I used to use the notes on my phone, but then that blue light or you're getting that bright light from the phone. So a good old pen and pencil is the best or paper is the best idea. Um, sometimes we have those emotional stressors, like maybe the death of a loved one or a friend that you just can't get off your mind and um, you need to make sure that you deal with that and reach out to that person or um, have someone reach out to you. Um, and then just the relational worries, uh, we have to put all those or deal with all of those before we'll get good sleep. So stages of sleep. we have four different stages and then of course that REM sleep. So our goal is to get into that stage three and four. So get into that deep sleep. So stage one and two are really easy to get into. You could get into it during this presentation, right? If you feel your head like drop and you're like, oh, there's sleep, there's one and two. Um, so, or maybe you're on an airplane and you just like your mouth relaxes and then you startle and wake up. So. Those stages are really um, easy to get into. That stage two, you'll, your breathing will start to slow and you can, like if you see someone fall asleep, you can kind of see when their breath starts to get a little deeper and slows down, you know they're sleeping pretty good or if you watch your kiddos. Um, and then that stage three and four, so that's that delta or that deep sleep. That's where you're gonna filter out unnecessary information, right? So you're kind of taking out the trash, your brain's cleaning or you're washing your brain, so to speak. Um, and then that rapid eye movement, that's um, where your heart rate starts to increase, your short term goes to long term memory, so very important as well. So sleep routine, who has a routine that they do every night before bed? Who has a routine at all? Lita does, yay. Who has a routine at all in this world, right? It's, I feel like everyone's just <coughs> kinda flying by the seat of their pants a lot of times and every day looks a little different for everybody, but our bodies crave routine. Um, so creating a schedule that works best for you and really trying to stick to it. So maybe you have your morning routine where you go for a walk or you have some coffee and do your devotions or whatever your morning looks like for you, trying to keep that consistent and then that bedtime routine consistent. So for me, it's I wash my face, I brush my teeth, I put on my pajamas and I read a little bit and then hopefully it's that. Um, really sanctifying that bedroom. So I know we've heard that before. No TV in your bedroom is the best um, case if you can do that. No computer, definitely not a workstation. So with a lot of folks working from home or trying to do more work from home, I feel like everyone's got a little pod or a workstation. Try not to make that in your bedroom. Um, keeping that bedroom cool and dark. So you've got to shut out all the lights. I'll even have like alarm clocks. I'll turn them to the other side. Um, you can turn your phone on that night shift mode. So if you have an Apple phone, there's an app called Night Shift and you can 
turn that on. That'll um, gradually dim your, the light on your phone. And then you can still have your alarm set. It's still gonna go off, but it's not gonna wake you up throughout the night. Um, again, eating that last meal, no later than seven. A lot of people like a time to cut off. So if you need a time, seven, that's assuming that you go to bed around 10, but three hours before your bedtime. So if you're a 9 p.m. or you need to go to six. Um, no snacking, trying not to spike that blood sugar. Um, dimming those lights and turning off electronic devices and then take an Epsom salt bath. So you have a handout on magnesium. So <coughs> Epsom salt baths are awesome. You just need to do about two a week. You soak in a hot bath for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. It sounds terrible, right? Your um, skin absorbs magnesium. So skin's our largest organ. We can take in the most magnesium from an Epsom salt bath probably. <coughs> Um, everybody's a little different on that. But magnesium is kind of that calming mineral, right? It calms us down, and we need a lot more calm in today's society. So those that handout's just high sources of magnesium. So just making sure you're getting a few of those into your day, um, or like I said, taking that magnesium bath a couple times a week. It helps calm you, relax you. So like I said, our body expects routine. So I feel like when we're kids, we get stickers and stars for sticking to that routine or doing the right thing, and we don't get that as an adult. So you might have to actually write out, okay, I'm going to do this and that and that. So how, what, is your, what is your routine gonna look like? What's gonna help you settle in and, and be able to sleep? We can promote sleep during the day. So however our day shakes out is really gonna impact how we sleep in the evening. So very first thing in the morning, it's really important to step outside into the sunshine. And I, know, I mean, the weather's great right now, so it's no, no trouble for us, but in the winter, it can become a little, you know, a little brisk to go out there. So you can just open all the blinds in your house or just try to get some natural light um, within that first half hour of waking. Again, it's honoring the circadian rhythms. It's telling your brain it's time to wake up, sun's up, I'm up. Um, taking your dog or kids on a walk or maybe meeting your friends for one. So getting some type of activity um, in, into your day. I try to like do laundry or run the sweeper to wake everybody up or something like that. So just getting some, some movement in. Um, trying to get that exercise in before lunch. So the earlier in the day, your cortisol levels are higher. So the earlier in the day you can exercise, um, the better. And we say lunch is about 2 p.m. So just trying to get your exercise in before 2 p.m. It's not feasible for everybody, um, but if you can, that'll help um, with your sleep. Eating your lunch outside. So again, being outside in that sunshine, absorbing that vitamin D. We just need 15 minutes a day of that sunlight to get the recommended vitamin D. Um, stop drinking coffee before 2 p.m. So that's coffee, that's soda, that's candy, that's anything that contains caffeine. They sneak it into everything these days. Um, we have all, let's see, what is the popular, like Spark or those Bang energy drinks or Monsters or people drink all kinds of stuff to get that caffeine hit. So cut that off before two o'clock if you can. And that's, that caffeine has a half life of about seven hours. So if you had it at two at nine o'clock, it's still going to be in that system. So just recognizing that um, and then avoiding. Yeah, anything? Any questions so far? So good. Um, so food, gut, sleep connection. So the more we learn about our gut health, right? That's very popular um, now too. We're actually gonna do a gut presentation at the end of the month on that first week of June, which is really going to be interesting. So we know that everything kind of starts in the gut um, and a healthy gut equals healthy us, right? So blood sugar, so um, that food gut sleep connection during periods of uncontrolled blood sugar levels, your body doesn't prioritize that mental clarity, focus, it can cause hormone imbalances, fertility. So we wanna try to stabilize our blood sugar throughout the day. And unfortunately, our food sources do not support a stable blood sugar level, right? Sugars in everything spikes our blood sugar up and then as what goes up has to come down so we end up bottoming out and then when we're bottoming out what do we want to do eat something sweet or something high carb or high sugar to spike us back up and so we're just on this constant up and down and we want to try to level off more 
So knowing that our body has one priority and it's to survive, right? So um, blood sugar regulation is key. Trying to eat foods at about the same time. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? If you get into that routine, eat them about the same time every day, your body's gonna expect that, your brain will anticipate it, digestion will start to occur. Um, your body loves routine. Focus on relaxing as you eat. So try not to eat while you're driving in the car or while you're sitting at your desk working. Um, you wanna just relax at mealtime, stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system or calming so you can digest that food. Um, eat foods that are balanced, so nothing too carb rich. And I hate to use that word carb rich because carbohydrates are not a bad thing. In fact, they're our body's number one source of energy and they're very good for us. They get a bad rap because we eat so many processed carbohydrates. So focusing on those whole food carbohydrates, so your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains, awesome. It's more the refined carbohydrates, cookies, candies, pies, pastries, those things that were grown through crackers, chips, things like that. So trying, and you can still have those things, right? I'm an everything in moderation kind of girl. We just have to pair those things with a healthy fat and a protein to help balance us out. So trying to make sure our plate is 75% colorful veggies. Do you like that? We used to say half your plate colorful veggies. And now we're like, you know what? That's not working either. Let's just go 75% how it shakes out. I feel like the thought behind that is if we say 75%, you guys will do half, and then I'm that way too. I'm like, well, I did pretty good today. Um, and then that healthy fat, we usually say about the size of your thumb portion. So that would be um, oils that you're using. So maybe avocado oils or avocados. I feel like even with fat, we, we're such a everything in excess culture, right? So, oh, they say fats are good, so I'm gonna eat a whole avocado and maybe two, and then I'm gonna sprinkle olive oil all over my salad. And so we're just eating so much fat um, that, that we're really not balancing out. And we don't wanna swing it one way or the other, right? We have to balance. And then your palm size, so without your fingers, just the size and thickness of your palm is usually that protein source. So that's what a piece of steak would look like, or chicken, or if you do rice and beans, um, sample day, and this is where I said I'll send you the presentation because this is a lot, but this is just blood sugar regulation at its finest. So what would a perfect day look like? For breakfast, you might saute some spinach, mushrooms, peppers, and onions, and butter. You add a couple eggs and then some pepper to taste, right? So like a omelet or a frittata. Um, for your morning snack, maybe just a handful of nuts and seeds. A handful of nuts and seeds is so great every day if you it's a great way to get healthy fats in and to really stabilize the blood sugar. Um, lunch, you might have a salad with some salmon and avocado. Uh, afternoon snack, hard boiled eggs are great. Again, those nuts and seeds, beef jerky. And then for dinner, maybe you have some Brussels sprouts with some grilled chicken and a sweet potato. So just very, very blood sugar regulatory. And then maybe you have a little scoop of ice cream because you did so good that day, and that's okay too. Um, and breakfast is really that most important meal um, because that's gonna set you up for the whole day with that blood sugar regulation. So for breakfast, eating a donut and having coffee is probably one of the worst things that we can do, right? So your gut at breakfast is clean, right? You've digested everything. So how do you start that day? However that looks like. So if you intermittent fast, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't eat breakfast because I intermittent fast, so I don't eat until noon. Well, that's fine. Noon's your breakfast, and that very first thing that you put into your body is, is really important. So making sure you're getting that healthy fat and protein. Hormones. Hormones can affect our sleep. Very uh, Hormones can affect everything, quite frankly. Um, hormones work together kind of like a symphony right? So you don't want one to be louder than the other or one to be playing a different song than the other one. They have to work in unison to, to make you function beautifully. Um, so hormones really help keep us happy. They help keep us focused. They help keep us calm. Um, they can help us with, with our sleep. They control that stress, stress response through the adrenal glands and blood sugar through the pancreas. Um, progesterone deficiency can impact sleep, so that's a really common one with women. 
sleep can affect your testosterone levels. So even though we have all women here today, we still have testosterone, right? We'd like our levels to be about 20 or 25. Men are more like over 600 is ideal or optimal level. So um, big difference there, but we still need that. Um, hormone balancing diet's always gonna be low in sugar. I feel like any nutritional plan that you, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, we want you to be low in sugar. Not no sugar, just low. High in healthy fats and protein, and you really wanna bulk up on that fiber. So we can help regulate our hormones by supporting our good nutritional habits. So you think you're saying added sugar or do you mean like? Added sugar, sugar. yes. Yeah. So, you know, with the fruit, people are always like, oh, I don't eat fruit because it's high in sugar. I'm like, well, the fi it's, not, it's not that simple, right? Fruit has fiber, it has lots of vitamins and minerals that work together, and there's a whole lot that happens when you eat fruit versus when you eat a snicker bar. So they're very, very different. You can go low sugar fruits if you're diabetic or you need to do that. Um, toxic load. So if you're waking up between one and 3 a.m., it could be because your liver is detoxing all the crap that we consume throughout the day, right? So just making a mental note, if you wake up at the same time, maybe clean up your diet a little bit and see if that impacts impacts it. That's where the, the alcohol can really come into play. If your liver's detoxing from alcohol and you're wide awake at three in the morning. Our bladder can also wake us up at three in the morning, right? Um, natural detoxifiers. So just trying to get more cruciferous vegetables. So that's your broccoli, your cauliflower, your Brussels sprouts. Um, breaking a sweat. So exercise, when we sweat, we're releasing toxins from our, our system. And if you don't like exercise, you can break a sweat lots of different ways. You can go on a walk, you can play with your kids or your grandkids, you can play with your dog, anything. You can clean your house aggressively, right? Anything that, that makes you break a sweat. Um, getting some sunlight, so that vitamin D is gonna um, support your immune system and your detox pathways. Uh, metabolic waste is eliminated during sleep. So like I said, we take out the trash and then quality sleep is key to a healthy immune system. So stress, we have to talk about stress. Everyone has to talk about stress these days. Um, it goes hand in hand with sleep. We have to deal with the stress that comes our way and just recognizing that stress is always a part of our day, right? We're always gonna have stress. We're always gonna have hiccups in our day. Sometimes it's more than others but we control a lot of it on how we respond to it. So trying to clear your mind before bed. So again, writing down all those things that maybe bother you or you worry, um, just get them off your chest or out of your head. And then on that same notepad, writing down things that you're grateful for. There's a lot of research behind gratitude. We've really focused on that the last um, year or so but writing down something that you're grateful for each day. A lot of people like the three things, so writing down three things, I feel like that can get overwhelming because some days there's, you know, you can barely think of one and that's okay. Just something that you're grateful for every single day. Um, reaching out to your support system. So making sure that you're connecting with other people. It's very important to reach out, see how they're doing, see how you're doing, setting time aside for those relationships. Um, breathing. So the easiest way to take yourself out of a stressful situation or when you get yourself worked up, what do people say? Take a deep breath, relax, right? It really works. Neighbors in traffic, if people really irritate you, just take a deep breath. Um, so we have a couple different techniques that we'll go through today. There's the four, seven, eight breathing technique and then alternate nostril breathing. We do both of those in, in yoga. Um, so don't fall asleep, but close your eyes. Just relax. We're going to take a deep breath in for a count of four. So start to inhale for one, two, three, four. Now hold that breath for seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now exhale through your mouth forcefully for eight, seven, six, five, keep exhaling, four, three, two, one. So just that nice deep breath where you inhale for a count of four, hold it for seven, and then exhale longer than your inhale. So that's the key, exhales longer than your inhales. That'll help calm you. And then 
the alternate nostril breathing, that's just where in yoga we usually do thumb and ring finger. So you're just closing off one nostril, breathing in through. So if you close off the right, you'll take a deep breath in through the left. And then you're gonna take that ring finger, close off the left, exhale all the way through that right nostril, and then take that deep breath in through the right, and then close it off, exhale through the left, and then inhale through the left, and then close it off. So you're just switching. So activating both of those hemispheres of the brain um, helps calm you. And eyes closed is always good, right? That signals to that parasympathetic nervous system to, to calm down. Um, another way to deal with stress, if social media brings you stress, some people love social media, it's great. Other people, it makes them anxious. Um, I always recommend just delete it off your phone. You can check it on your computer, so that way you're not, every time you um, get distracted or bored, you pop on there. If it's off your phone, you can't do that, but you can always check in with friends and family um, at a designated time throughout the day. Um, and then you don't feel like, oh, I'm probably missing something because I haven't checked it in the last five minutes. Um, reframing how you look at stress. So again, how we react is, is the most important thing to stress. We control our reactions. Um, exercise, I do love exercise. I think it's great, but I know it's not everyone's thing. About 80% of our population does not exercise and that is totally okay. We still have to move, right? We are, we are creatures of movement. We have to move. Um, I always tell people when they start to exercise, Start slow and start low and titrate up. So don't go out there and try to take a walk for 30 minutes or you know, take a group exercise class that's 45 minutes. You'll be sore and miserable the next day. So our goal with exercise is just to stimulate those muscles. We don't wanna annihilate them, right? There's no reason to train like a professional athlete or work so hard you're miserable. Do something that you enjoy. Um, again, exercising earlier in the day is better. So ideally before 2 p.m. Knowing that you cannot be in go mode all the time. So if you are a nurse and you are running ragged all day long, then maybe yoga would be a really good complement to your day. So we've got to have that yin and yang, right? That balance. Or if we sit at our desk all day, maybe a high intensity or a spinning class or you know running or something like that would be better for us um, because we need that that higher intensity because we haven't been doing anything all day. Um, incorporating strength training, I think strength training is so very important, um, especially for women, especially as we get older. So lifting those heavy weights or, you know, picking up your water softener salt bag, things like that, um, it helps elicit a hormone response that starts to decline as, as we get older. Um, so keep lifting twice a week is the goal getting outside and doing something fun every day. So going for a hike, going for a walk, um, you can take five minutes and take a loop around the hospital or we've got the great little path around the pond that you can do. Um, the more we prioritize movement, the better we'll sleep. So the more you can get up from your desk, walk around, um, move, the better. So sleep, the sleep reset, so how do we get the, the best quality sleep? This is just kind of a re group or recap of what we talked about. So honoring those circadian rhythms, getting outside within that first 15 minutes of waking up, trying to stay out there for 15 or 20 minutes, incorporating some type of movement in our day before two. It can be something as simple as a, wipe, a walk or a bike ride. Um, focus on blue block, blocking that light towards the end of your day. So three hours before bed, start to dark and dim your house. Um, no phone or email within the first 30 minutes of waking up. So try to just let yourself wake up naturally, get out in the sunlight, drink some coffee, don't go to work immediately. Um, knowing that the food and gut are very connected to your sleep. So if you suspect that that low blood sugar is waking you up between one and three, maybe trying a handful of nuts before bed. We had one that likes to do that or have some nuts beside your bed just to help stabilize your blood sugar. Um, making sure you're getting healthy fats, protein, and fiber. So if you focus on those three things, healthy fats, protein, fiber, you're gonna make a big change. Um, filling your plate with mostly plants, so about 75% plants, fruits, vegetables, healthy fat, and a little bit of protein. Um, and then there's just a list of some of our most nutrient-dense foods. So dark green leafy vegetables, I know you've heard that. 
avocados, nuts and seeds, berries are wonderful, so blueberries, strawberries are getting ready to come in season, so um, green apples are great, fatty fishes, broccoli, olive oil, garlic, onion, sauerkraut, so those are the fermented foods for your gut health. Um, sleep environment, so bedroom cool and dark, cool is 65 to 72 degrees. So for some of us, our thermostat is much warmer than that during the day. There's usually settings where you can drop it down at night, get it a little colder. Um, creating that sleep routine, so wash your face, floss, brush your teeth, um, putting those pajamas on, trying those breathing exercises if you're having trouble. So you've got your four, seven, eight, or your alternate nostril breathing, you can do that in bed. Knowing that touch is relaxing, so hug your kiddos before bed, hug your loved ones before bed. Um, chamomile tea, so there's a lot of sleepy time teas or no caffeine teas that you can do that'll kind of um, help you decompress. Um, no work or no games on your phone before bed, right? We don't want to excite that brain. Minimizing the noise, so you might need to wear earplugs. So <laughs> knowing that sleep is the most important thing that we do each day, so prioritize it each and every day. Any questions at all? Yeah. What do you know about naps related to like sleep later on the on in the day? Because I I can't nap. Like if I nap, it like affects everything. Yes. So, but a lot of my patients are like, I have to have a nap. Yes. And I feel like people are. It's one way or the other. So 15 to 20 minutes is the ideal nap time, right? If I'm taking a nap, it's gonna it's got to be an hour. Like I can't. I very rarely take a nap, but I'm the same way. If I take a nap, then I feel like it, if it's that long, it has to be for me, then it throws off my sleep at night. So everyone's wired a little different, but there's a lot of support to the napping throughout the day. Um, and it's usually that three o'clock time and we're all working, so we're never going to nap at that time. And by the time you get home, it's too late. So maybe just going to bed a little earlier, but yeah, there's not a 15 to 20 minutes You guys know yourself better than anyone, right? We're our own best prescribers. So if naps work for you, take them. If they don't, and you feel lousy, so, yeah. Is that shift a shift to do? Oh, well, you have to, right? Yeah, Night shift point. is such a, oh, I feel for you guys so Before much. Before you go to work or, but, you know, between that seven to seven, should you really, you know, will that throw your metabolism off? Or? So do you sleep during the day? Yeah, so you, I mean, you have to eat when you're working, right? So yeah, yeah, just halfway through it, set it up. So make sure, say you go to bed between nine and 10 in the morning. So you just wouldn't want to eat like after 6 a.m. ish, right? The three hours before your sleep. So it's, it's wired the same way, um, but it gets, you're not honoring your circadian rhythms with, with night shift. So, but some people are just wired that way too. Like they stay up all night and that's probably who you are, right? Um, I have an aunt that works night shift and she's, that's just the way that she does it, so. Any other questions? So you guys have a couple handouts. So there's a little routine where I, like I said, routine is key. So there's some key points written down there for you, but just kind of creating your own little schedule. You've got the magnesium handout to start incorporating magnesium into your day. Most people are deficient in magnesium these days, so um, it's not gonna hurt you to add a little bit of that. And then there's an evaluation. I know the date's wrong. I just didn't wanna waste paper, so I know what group you're in, so don't worry about changing that. Um, but you can fill out that uh, evaluation. We haven't done live presentations for a very long time, so it's so wonderful to have you all. Um, at the bottom, there is a place for comments. Please write down topics that you're interested in or wellness events that you would like to see in the future. You guys help us plan the most incredible program. So send me your ideas and thoughts anytime. All right. Have a great Thursday. Thank you. Thank you.